Have you always wanted to make a video game or have you tried making a game and ended up just getting lost or stuck and ended up giving up? That sounds like you, then stay tuned because in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you the exact steps you need to take to create and release your first video game. Many of these steps are critical to the success of your game. If after watching this video, you do wanna learn more about the technical aspects of how to create a game, feel free to check out my personal YouTube channel, Turbo Mace Games. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is create a plan for your game. Chances are, if you're interested in creating a video game, you've kicked around some ideas for different types of games in your head. So this is where you wanna get those ideas in your head down onto paper. Typically, this is what's known as a game design document. And a game design document can be as short as one page long, and if you're at like a big AAA studio, they could be many hundreds of pages long. Now, the game design document is basically just everything that is going to be in your game. So you're gonna to want to talk about what platforms you're gonna be releasing your game on, what the genre of the game is, and kind of what the core gameplay mechanics are. You also wanna have an idea of what your audience is gonna be and what types of people are gonna be playing your game and what should they feel when they play your game. Also, you're gonna to wanna to talk about the visuals, what kind of art style is it gonna have, and maybe even put some images for references of games that you want your game to look like. You also need to keep in mind the audio. So what kind of music is your game gonna have? Are you gonna to need to have voice actors, those kinds of things. And also one important part of your game design document is putting your launch date on there. And this doesn't have to be something that's publicly known. You don't have to publicly announce your launch date at this point, but it's just something for you to keep an idea of how long you should be working on this project for. If you're making your first game, I'd recommend working on a project for no more than three to six months. Your game design document should really answer any question that you may have about your game. So when you're developing it, and you're thinking about maybe adding a feature in, you can go back to your game design document and say, does this feature add or subtract to my kind of initial vision for this game? And here you kind of just want to determine the minimum amount of content that you can have in your game for you to be satisfied um, with your game to release it out to the public. So now once you have your game planned out, you might think that um, now it's time to go ahead and start programming things. Nope, hold on, just wait a second. We're gonna actually start with something that's known as a paper prototype. Paper prototype is pretty much just like a board game. You wanna make like a physical representation of your game. And you can do this with any genre of game. Doesn't matter if you're making a racing game, a 2D platformer, a first person shooter, you always want to make a paper prototype of your game. Now the main idea behind creating a paper prototype of your game is to just prove the concept of your game. You know, is your game actually fun to play? and do the rules kind of make sense. Now what you're trying to do with a paper prototype is determine if your core game mechanics are fun. Also the really nice thing about paper prototyping is you can do rapid iteration. So if something doesn't work, you know, you can quickly make some changes because you're not you know, programming anything yet, you can just kind of like erase something and maybe write in some new numbers. And it really allows you to change a bunch of things at this early stage of your game. So you can kind of really figure out what your game is gonna look like when you go to make a digital prototype of it. And with the paper prototype, it's key at this stage to start getting in the habit of play testing because that's gonna be a theme. You're gonna be doing a whole lot of play testing throughout the process of creating your game. So you wanna to go to your friends, family, and coworkers and start asking them to play the paper prototype of your game. And now it might seem a little weird and embarrassing at this point, but that is A-OK -okay because you just want to you know, get the game in the hands of other people and kind of see how they start interacting with your game. And you're really gonna learn a lot about your game at this point. And maybe your initial vision changes quite a bit. So anyways, once you've done a thorough paper prototype, now you're gonna to wanna to move on to a digital prototype. And so this is kind of like the step you've all been waiting for. This is the fun part where we actually start to make things move around on the screen. Now at this stage, you really just wanna focus on the core mechanics of your game. You don't need to worry about having good looking art or anything like that. You just wanna see if the core mechanics are, again, fun to play. It's really important to play test your game at this point when it's just kind of some like square boxes on the screen and it's just like really, really crude because that's gonna tell you if your game is actually fun because you know just adding a bunch of pretty graphics and stuff doesn't necessarily make your game more fun. When you play test your game, people are going to absolutely break the heck out of your game and that's okay. That's what you want to happen because that's how you're going to learn what things don't work in your game and ways that you can improve the, upon them. One thing that you want to do during this play testing phase is really take notes on how people are interacting with your game 
And then at the end, if possible, try and give them a survey. It's really nice to use something like Google Forms to just ask them a couple um, simple questions about your game and how and what their experience was like playing your game. Now it's really important to get your game in the hands of people who've never seen your game or even heard of it before. When I was in college and we were making a game, our professor tasked us with um, going out onto campus and you know getting a certain number of random people to play test our game. And initially we just kind of stood outside the library and we were asking people as they were walking in like, hey, do you want to play our game? Hey, do you want to play our game? You know how many people we got to play our game? Zero. A much better approach that we found was to walk up to people directly. So we saw some people sitting over at a table and we'd walk up to them and said, hey, you know, we're working on a project right now. We'd really appreciate if if you could help us with it. And then it'd be like, oh, okay, you know, kind of what's the, what's the project? Say, well, we're actually making a video game. And they'd be like, oh, wow, that's super cool. And then so everyone was like really responsive and willing to help when we kind of like walked up to them and asked them to play our game. And you know, we'd just have them play it for a couple of minutes and ask them a couple of questions about their experience. And that's all you really need to do. Just kind of, again, get the game in the hands of some other people and see how people are actually interacting with your game and what kinds of weird things they're doing to break your game. So when you're kind of doing the digital prototyping, this is where you want to start to get in that whole loop of designing, testing, and implementing different features into your game until you're kind of at like a place where your game is pretty much feature complete, but it may not necessarily be um, complete for the art and everything like that. So that's kind of like the alpha stage of game development. Now the next thing that you want to create is what's called a vertical slice of your game. And a vertical slice can be kind of thought of as as like a demo basically you want this to be um, just like a little a small section of your game but you want this to look like the final game so it should have final art assets final audio and pretty much everything in the game should look and feel as exactly as how it's going to be when you ship your game now the nice thing about having a vertical slice is you can use this to actually promote your game and this can be a whole topic entirely uh, but using this vertical slice, you know, you can make a trailer with it or release a demo out to the public and just kind of grow your audience, start kind of building awareness of your game. Also, if you want to fund your game, you can use this vertical slice as a way to promote your Kickstarter. And so you can uh, kind of use crowdfunding to gather funding for your game. Also with this vertical slice, you can go to a publisher and say, hey, this is kind of the idea of a game that we're making. Um, this is just, you know, a small vertical slice of it. Feel free to play it. And this is kind of the, the vision of a game that we want to build. And then you can kind of talk about some more of the things that you have planned, of course. Next thing to do is kind of start building out the full content of your game. So you want to start getting in more levels and just more things for the player to do and kind of start implementing all those things that you planned out in your initial design document. So then once it's up to that point, that's where you can kind of say that it's in the beta phase. So at this point, it's going to be content complete you know the whole game is going to be playable from front to back it's going to look pretty good there may be some minor issues here and there and kind of some um, a little bit of extra polishing that still needs to take place but for the most part your game is finished this is the phase where you're going to be spending most of your time is actually getting your game up to this beta phase and it's important that you keep regularly updating your audience kind of with the progress that you've been making to keep your game on their minds um, just so they remember kind of what it is now it's important here to really stick to the plan this is not the time to add new features to your game or anything like that because then you're going to start getting into what's known as feature creep where you start to add too many things to your game and then your game just never gets released. So if you have some cool ideas, feel free to write them down and save them for the sequel to your game. Three things that are really important to do during this phase. Number one, play test. Number two, play test. And number three, play test some more. Again, it's really, really important to see how people are experiencing with your game. Are they having a good time with your game? You know, are there, what kind of issues are popping up? Are things breaking in your game? You want to find all this about ahead of time before you actually go and launch your game. Now's the time when you want to start making the marketing push of your game. So here's where you want to find journalists and content creators like um, people on Twitch and YouTube. And you want to start, you know, sending them emails, telling them about your game. One really nice tip that you can do when you're sending them an email is attach a GIF or GIF, however you prefer. Uh, to the email, just kind of showing some basic gameplay and what the whole idea behind your game is. This is gonna be really eye-catching for them and if they see it and they like it, then they're much more willing to you know, download it 
and uh, write an article about it or you know play it on their twitch stream or something like that all right so now is the exciting time it's time to go ahead and launch your game so when your game is ready you know obviously go ahead and put it out on launch day you don't want to have a big marketing push getting people all excited to go out and buy your game. Now on launch day, you wanna really try and interact with the people playing your game as much as possible. So if there are people uh, streaming your game or playing your game or talking about it online, make sure you're interacting with them and just kind of overall being positive and making sure everyone has a good experience with your game so they can kind of spread that word of mouth and get the game in the hands of more people. Now the day that you're gonna get your highest number of sales is of course going to be your launch day. So you really wanna make sure that again, you have a whole bunch of people knowing when your game is going to launch so it can make the biggest splash on launch day. Now that's not to discredit what's known as the long tail, which is actually where a lot of smaller games succeed. The more your game is out there, you know, you kind of get one sale here, a couple sales here, and then that really adds up. So it's really important to continue supporting your game after launch. So you're gonna continue to fix issues with your game. Um, are you gonna add new features or maybe even some paid DLC to make a little bit more money off your game? Another way that you can make some good money off your game is through making a sale. Now by participating in a sale, it's gonna make people much more likely to buy your game at a discounted price as opposed to the full price. The thing you need to keep in mind with sales is timing is really key on this one. So of course, if you have a game that might fit, fit with like a holiday theme, you could bundle in your game with some kind of holiday themed sale. But how soon that you put your game on sale is also really relevant um, because you don't wanna put your game on sale too soon after launch because then some of the people who bought it at full price might feel like they got ripped off or something like that. Um, but you also don't wanna put it too far out to the point where people don't even remember about your game. So you kinda of wanna find that right balance and just it depends on what, what's right for your game. Once again, if you do wanna learn more about the mechanics of how to create a game, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, which is Turbo Makes Games. Cool, I think that's good. 